Hi, I'm George Levy for Bits Online, and I'm at the North American Bitcoin Conference, where I'm having the opportunity to speak with Hartej Sani, co-founder of Hosho, a leading cybersecurity blockchain firm. It's a real pleasure to speak with you. Thanks so much for having me, George. I'm actually uh, very, very interested in this conversation, not only because you're one of the speakers here at the event, uh, but about your expertise in cybersecurity. And uh, there's one specific area I would like to ask you because it's something that a lot of our audience has been asking about. There was planned an upgrade to Ethereum, which is called Constantinople. And the Constantinople upgrade was pulled at the last minute because of a critical security uh, vulnerability. I want to know your take on that because you deal with this on a regular basis. Yeah, so, I mean, I'm the co-founder of Hosho and we've audited a lot of smart contracts for a lot of ICOs, more than anyone else in the space. And it's extremely important to audit code, any code that's written, especially one that's for a smart contract. Someone has to have a QA mindset and to also be very familiar with Solidity, which is the language that Ethereum is written in, which is a relatively new language. So there's a very small subset of human beings on this planet Earth that have a QA mindset and have had the incentive to really master Solidity and be in the blockchain ecosystem. So I'll start by saying that, that it's, there's a few number of human beings on this earth that can actually audit this type of code that has been written for Constantinople. And there is a growing number of auditing companies just like Hosho out there that uh, can find vulnerabilities and critical vulnerabilities like the one that they found. And my curiosity is, did the Ethereum devs behind Constantinople, did they get it, their code audited by a professional third party or were they only relying on somebody in-house? And it's important to have in-house security and it's important to go through an in-house audit. But sometimes it's kind of like writing your own essay. You think you did it great and your buddy who helped you out write the essay thinks everything is perfect and then as soon as your, a third party takes a look at it, they catch critical vulnerabilities. and. In this space, we're talking about actual money. So it's ever more important to get not one, but maybe two, maybe three professional third parties to audit the code. And when they're auditing the code, what it entails usually is leveraging a mix of automated tooling and manual tooling. And so someone is manually going to have to marry the, at least for like an, a typical Ethereum ICO, someone is marrying the white paper to the actual code and making sure the code is doing exactly what it's supposed to do, but they're leveraging automated tooling, like gas analysis, static analysis, so on and so forth. Um, and, and most of the errors in the smart contracts in the ICO space that we have seen at Hosho, most of the errors are actually logic errors. The errors are made in the logic. Uh, things such as the, found, uh, the founders are never going to receive the tokens if this smart contract goes live. Or uh, you wrote in the white paper that you're going to create 21 million tokens, but the contract only creates one-sixth as many. And so simple math problems, logic errors. And so I, if the Ethereum core developers need to respect security just like everyone else, I. It's disappointing to hear they found a critical vulnerability, but it's also a good thing. I, I think it's a good thing the pace at which Ethereum has been moving, personally. Uh, I think people are in a rush to say, oh, Ethereum should release everything right away. Why is Casper not out? I think it, it's really important to take a step back and figure out if this got out there and there was a critical vulnerability, people would lose millions of dollars. So I'm more than happy to have respected full-stack engineers like Vitalik Buterin and Vlad Zamfir. Those are bright minds in this space and I'm, I'm glad that they're taking their time. They should take their time. That's a, that's a very, very interesting point. You brought, up some, you brought up a lot of interesting points here because you regularly audit smart contracts for ICOs. And, but what's interesting about this specific vulnerability, which is, which is what I think is most you know, just incredible about this thing is that you're talking about pretty much the operating system of this. So the question is, this vulnerability could affect everything all of your clients are doing. Just that vulnerability could impact everybody. It's not one smart contract. It was more of a general issue. It was a big, big, big problem. Uh, it could it could have been within Constantinople a big problem, yeah. But 
I think that they'll solve this problem. It's going to take them a little while to fix, and I'm glad they pulled it back, and good on chain security for finding the vulnerability. And I'm glad you say that, because the truth is, I mean, Ethereum is a work in progress, and, uh, and there's going to be many, many more changes moving forward, which brings up a really interesting thing, um, which as a decentralized cryptocurrency, and the question is, are there governance steps where you actually have to put in a quality assurance step, like, you know, have to include a security audit from a third party, perhaps? Well, who's the third party? Would that be a, de would that be a centralized step? There's a lot of things that need to be answered in order to be really have produce quality, you know, software that has been bug tested properly. Yeah, I mean, we still have a debate going on in the space of whether or not smart contract audits will be fully automated or not. And personally, I think that we're really far off from a fully automated smart contract audit. I think we still need a team of human beings to m conduct a thorough manual audit in addition to leveraging automated tooling. Any sophisticated cybersecurity company who's auditing code is using automated tooling. It's not a, it's not a revolution. But um, you know, AI and machine learning just aren't there yet. And it's super important for this industry to just adopt best cybersecurity practices from places like the financial industry. That if we were to just adopt their best practices, this industry would learn a lot and would improve a lot. If cryptocurrency exchanges got regular penetration tests every time their code changed, that would be amazing. If every single cryptocurrency wallet that's being out there got regularly penetration tested every time their code changed, that would be amazing. We'd mitigate immense amount of risk. If we had cryptocurrency exchanges communicating with each other when coins are stolen, that we can actually use companies like um, chain analysis to track the coin and track in between exchanges which coins were stolen and where did they go and how were they liquidated. And often they're liquidated in exchanges like Binance because on Binance there's no KYC or AML up to three Bitcoin. So you're Clearly, you can track stolen BTC and figure out where they're being cleaned out and laundered from. That's a very, very expert answer to that, and you obviously know your, uh, you know your space. Let me ask you a question for the audience. Uh, you specialize in, uh, in auditing smart contracts. You do penetration testing. How can people find out more about what Hosho does? They can go to our website, hosho.io. The word Hosho means security in Japanese. We just took inspiration from maybe Satoshi Nakamoto being Japanese sounding. Uh -huh. uh, and yeah, Hosho.io, we're on Twitter, Hosho. My name is Hartej, H-A-R-T-E-J. You can find me on Twitter and anywhere on the internet with just my first name. Thank you very, very much. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something in the process. I bring you brand new videos every single week, so I invite you also to subscribe so we can stay in touch. Also, if you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them below. I would love to hear from you. Until next time, we are changing the world, one blockchain at a time. I'm George Levy. Thank you for watching.